Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation. Today we are going to talk about force calculation with FEM. And so in this video we will see first an introduction, then we will talk about how to calculate force in a magnetic circuit. We will show an example of calculation. We will see how to do the implementation of the problem using FEM. And finally, we will see how to calculate the force under AC operation. This is another video in this uh, series about FEM. If you are not familiar with FEM, I recommend you to take a look at these two uh, videos, FEM number one and FEM number two. So in this video, we are going to see how to calculate forces in magnetic circuits. And we are going to take as an example the inductor in which we have two E halves and then we have a winding, we have a current circulating in the winding which is generating a magnetic flux inside the structure. We have seen many times that if we try to separate both halves, we have to exert a force on them. So what we are going to calculate today is what is the value of this force that we have between the two halves of the inductor. Before using FEM to calculate this force, we are going to see an analytical solution to the problem based on the principle of virtual displacement. The idea is that if we move a little bit this part of the core, the bottom half of the core, just a small distance, delta x, then we will have to undo a work which is the force time times the distance. And because of the principle of conservation of energy, the work is going to be equal to the change of the energy of the system. So then we can obtain finally the force by taking the derivative of the energy of our system with respect to the distance x. So in the case of our inductor now, we uh, have seen already in previous videos in this series how to obtain the flux that we are going to have in the structure. We have the main flux here, phi, and then half of the flux goes through the right arm, the other half goes through the a left arm and close in this way. So we can calculate the flux by using this equivalent reluctance circuit that we have seen before. With this we can obtain the magnetic flux using this expression here. As we have seen, usually the reluctance of the gap is much higher than the reluctance of the core, so we can approximate the magnetic flux with this expression and finally with the value of the reluctance we can get this final expression here. From the magnetic flux we can obtain also the magnetic flux density in the material B which is equal to this value here. Now we have to calculate the energy stored in our device. And for this, we know this expression here and that the total energy is equal to 1 over 2 the integral of Vh dV, where V is the volume of the material. But we know that in this type of devices, the energy which is stored in the magnetic material itself is very low compared with the energy stored in the air gap. And also because the magnetic flux density is the same in the three arms of the structure, and this is so because usually the cross-section area of the central arm is double the section of the lateral arms. So with this we can approximate that the energy is equal to this value here, 1 over 2 mu 0 times b squared 
times the volume and the volume that we use here is the volume of the air gap. So here we have this expression uh, which is the um, value of the volume of the three air gaps that we have in the structure. And finally operating we can get this expression here. So now in order to obtain the final expression for the energy we only have to substitute this expression here and then we obtain this value here for the energy stored in our device. Now it is only a matter to take the derivative of the energy with respect to the dimension in which we are going to move our core, which is the length of the gap equivalent to the x direction. And then we obtain finally this expression here for the force that we are going to have between both halves of the core. It is important to note that here we could say if the gap is zero, then the force could be infinite. But this is not true, of course, the force is not going to be infinite in this case. What is the trick here? The trick is in this approximation that we have seen here. We have approximated that the uh, reluctance of the gap is much higher than the reluctance of the core. But if the gap is very small, then we cannot do this approximation and we have to consider the whole equation. So now let's see a particular example using this core EF25 that we have used in previous uh, videos. So in this case we have selected a current through the winding of 1 ampere. The distance G is 0.25 millimeters and the flux density is 0 0.2 tesla. So with this we can obtain the number of turns that we are going to require, which is this value here, 80, and then the inductance, we can also calculate the inductance using this expression that we have also seen in previous videos, and then this is the value that we get uh, in this case, which is 0 0.84 millihenries. Now to calculate the force we are going to use the expression that we have seen before which is this one shown here and for this we need the cross-sectional area AC that we have also seen previously in this case is in this value here and then substituting all the values we get finally in this value for the force which is 1.81 newton. Let's now understand a little bit better what is the meaning of this value 1.21 Newton. If we hand a weight like this one from the movable part of the core, then this means that we can put here a weight equal or with a mass equal to 181 grams. Before the movable part of the core starts to separate from the other part, which is a considerable value of the mass of the weight. Also also, we have to take into account that the force is proportional to the square of the current. So if we double the value of the current in the winding, then we can produce a force which is four times the previous value. Now let's see how to calculate the force using FEM. Here we can see a screen of this example. Uh, we only have to select the movable part of our magnetic structure and then go into block integrals and select the calculation corresponding to force using the weighted stress tensor. What the program has to do is to evaluate the force 
basically using the Lorentz force that we know very well, which corresponds to this expression here. We can obtain the force per unit volume using this other expression in which rho corresponds to the uh, density of the charge, J corresponds to the current density, and E and B, of course, are the electric field intensity and the magnetic flux density. In our case, if we are doing a magnetostatic problem, then the electric field is going to be zero. The current density can be calculated using the curl of the magnetic field intensity, which in a linear material can be expressed like this. As we know, so finally, this is the expression corresponding to the force per unit volume that the program has to solve. Now here we have the program with our magnetic structure. We can take a look with more detail. So we can see here and the core with both halves on the top and at the bottom. And then we have the coils, one here on the uh, left and the other on the right, the other part, uh, both parts of the coils. And note that in order to uh, be able to do the calculation for the program, we have to leave the movable part here free from other elements. So this is the reason why here we have left some distance between the winding and the core and also here we cannot do the uh, drawing joining both parts because the program is going to generate an error in that case. So now let's go back. Now we can uh, solve and now we can take a look at the results. So we can see, for example, how the magnetic flux density is around 0 0.20 Tesla, as we have designed. We can see the value here and in the different parts of the structure we have around this value. Now, in order to calculate the force, what we have to do is to select the block tool and then select the block corresponding to the bottom half of the structure. Now go to integrals and select the integral corresponding to the force. Say OK, and then we can see here the values of the force in the x direction. Of course, there is no force, it's almost zero. And in the y direction, we have 1.68 Newton in the direction corresponding to upwards. So this is a value quite similar to 1.8 and that we have obtained uh, theoretically. Now let's see what happens if we apply an alternating current through the windings. In a first glance, it could seem that because the effect of the alternating current, then the flux is changing continuously in both directions. So in principle, it could seem that there is not going to be a force between both halves of the magnetic structure. But this is not so, because if we pay attention to the equation of the force, we can see that the current is squared here. So if we substitute the value of the current, then we get this new expression here in which the sine is squared. And we know that the square of the sine can be expressed as this expression here is 1 plus cosine of twice the angle, omega t, divided by 2. So the final expression is like shown here. So the force that we have between both halves is doing like this. We have an evolution in which we have an average value of the force and a maximum value of the force. 
So the net force that we have is the average value and for a peak value of 1 ampere here then we will have half the value that we have obtained before which is 0 0.9 around 0 0.9 newton. So now let's see this example with AC current. We now have defined our problem here with a frequency in hertz of 100 kilohertz. And also we can take a look at the properties of our circuit, which is the coil. If we select modify property, we can see here the value of the current, 1 ampere. Remember that if we are doing an AC analysis, all the parameters are always peak value. So this is 1 ampere peak at 100 kilohertz. So now we can say OK and then we can solve the problem. So now here we can see the different values for example, of the magnetic flux density again, and now we can go to uh, blocks, select the bottom half of the structure, then go to integrals, and then select the calculation of the force, say OK, and then we can get here and the components corresponding to the force of course in the x direction is almost zero and in the y direction we have this value here which is uh, something like 0 0.84 which is half and the value that we have obtained using a DC current of 1 ampere. Okay, this concludes our presentation today. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.